All right, all set. Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Read Hidarashi Part Something. I think we're getting close to 20, right? Which is like double other people's playlist size. It's all right. It's all right, I'm slow, I know. <laughs> I like to ramble, but hopefully that'll help us solve it at the end. It's not just pointless. Um, last time we finished off chapter 10, which I thought was the end, so maybe we have like 12 chapters instead. Um, Teichi has prepared some measures of protection. He wrote sort of a message, kind of, to point suspicion at the other people. I forgot the exact contents, but he hid it behind the clock and like vaguely told his parents about it without giving it away. He also plans on taking a metal bat from school to protect himself. And I mean, again, the first thing we saw when we started reading was someone smashing someone with a bat, right? So maybe it was Keiichi smashing who? I don't know. Probably Rena, right? If I just had to get, oh, wouldn't that be terrible if like every route, you know, you have. <laughs> Teichi kills a person who's centered around the route. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Or maybe Neon. They're obviously the two spooky ones. We also got like a really weird hint. Where they were... <clears throat> it was a, it was one with sprites. Which means that this happened sometime. And they were obviously recently. And it was like Rena and Neon talking about Keichi. And him meeting uh, Uishi. And, um, it was very odd. It, they definitely, it felt like they definitely knew something. And then there's that weird laugh at the end. I think they're like, oh, Keiichi's trying to get demon away. Which is, like, kind of serious. And then they both just break out laughing. I don't know how I feel about that. It, I think I tried to explain last time. I think I tried to explain that. It, it honestly kind of feels like it's not important being demon the way like they're laughing like or maybe they don't really believe in being demon the way and they just it's a substitute for something i'm not sure exactly also it kind of hurts my brainwash theory since i said they're doing this unconsciously but they're obviously uh but them talking like that suspiciously while being conscious you know without the dead fish eyes is kind of against my theory but then again they didn't really explicitly say something like murderous or anything so who knows maybe it is still brainwashing which I still think it is it's just a little slip up but yeah let's get right into this continue let's see what Tichi does next but well, Justin is getting the bat in the morning this was the first time I'd ever woke with such clarity it was 5.59, just moments before my alarm would go off. I was amazed at the precision, precision of my internal clock. I had made preparations for the next day of school before I went to bed. I changed quickly and descended to the deserted lower level. It appeared that my mom was still asleep. Neither breakfast nor lunch was ready. Yesterday, I just un laterally, declared that I would be leaving early today, so it couldn't be helped. Early trains. Unlucky. <laughs> I slathered jam and some bread and topped it off with instant cocoa. Just as I was finishing up breakfast, Mom rose broadly from her slumber. Answering bluntly, I picked up my bag and stood after stuffing two slices of bread down my throat. If I waited for her to make my lunch, then it would end up being the same time as usual. If I did that, it would raise the chances of me running into Rena and Mian on the way. Yes, from today onwards, I was going to go to school alone. じゃあお昼はどうするの? 
I took the thousand yen bill from my, from mom and slipped it into my pockets. Also, if you can't tell, I'm still sick. <laughs> I think I'm getting better though. I feel less stuffy, but it's all right. Again, it's not too bad, and it's painful, you know, to read. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't be reading <laughs> or recording if that was the case. Yeah, <laughs> I have no reason to tell her every little detail, now do I? Finding it difficult answering the unsigned up questions, I made an annoyed face. I have no reason to tell her every little detail, now do I? Finding it difficult answering the unsigned up questions, I made an annoyed face. I have no reason to tell her every little detail, now do I? Finding it difficult I could only hope that they didn't get involved. It was safer that way. My mom's annoying voice was cut off by the slam of the door. For the first time since I moved here, I headed down the road to school alone. Up until now, I had always walked down the same path at the same time each day. So I always met with the same people at the same places. But today was different. I didn't meet up with the people I would normally, and nobody was at the places where I would have normally met them. That's a loud one. Of course, Rena wasn't in the spot where we usually met, and there wasn't anyone at the spot where we would have met up with Neon. The length of the tree's shadows, the morning air, the brightness of the sun, it was a completely different type of morning from what I was used to. Without a doubt, it felt strange. It left me with the impression that I had destroyed the illusion Hina Mizawa had set up for me before it had enough time to prepare all the props needed to deceive me. The person who called out to me was someone we always passed by as they were taking a walk along the edge of the fields. Their name was... Uh, I forgot. Of course this wasn't the spot where we usually passed each other. I threw out a random excuse. I was being asked the same type of questions my mom was asking. So I answered them in the same uninteresting, vague manner. It wasn't funny being asked for a rental was each time I passed by someone. But maybe it was to be expected. It was because for so long, we were always together, so amicably. Not sure what that means. Even I felt that if I let my guard down, we could still be fr- Stop it, Keiichi. Don't think about that anymore. You spent all day yesterday thinking about how dangerous it was to go soft, didn't you? Beep 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 beep. A car horn blared out of nowhere. Is it my boy, Uishi? Even though I was walking, lost in thought, that horn was way too close. A mechanical behemoth barreled at me from behind, catching me completely off guard. By the time I turned around, the van's hulking chassis was almost on the top of me. I'd see plenty of car cars veered to the opposite shoulder to avoid pedestrians, but this car was doing the opposite. It felt like... It felt like there was somebody on the opposite shoulder, and the van was swerving in my direction to avoid them. That blissfully ignorant train of thought delayed me from realizing something much, much more important. That large mass was hurling, hurtling, is that a word? Hurtling? Right at me. Was it going to hit me? The inside of my head instantly flooded with painfully cold liquid. In that moment, the scene before me, no, time itself, had frozen. In the silence of that frozen moment, I compared the van, so close that I had no way to dodge it, and my body, the upper half twisted awkwardly in order to, sh in order to look behind me. There was no way I could dive out of 
dive out of the way in my current position. If I lost focus now, this moment would unpause, and I would probably be plowed over, caught in this silly pose. Bend my upper body towards the paddy by the side of the road. If I bent far enough, I'd get away with just being hit by the side view mirror. As soon as that thought crossed my mind, the temporal stat status was shattered by the deafening sound of the van. Slow mo- Ooh. Wow, it worked. The side mirror struck my shoulders, sending me spinning off through the air like a top, locked in my contorted position. Really quick thinking. To splash. Sent tumbling through the air, I crashed into the muddy paddy by the side of the road. My entire body was soiled and drenched. But the choice I made that instant was unmistakably for the best. I was covered in mud, but when the alternative was being hit by the car, it was the closest thing that I could be to being unscathed. Rising out of the paddy, I had enough in me to glare over at the stopped van and yell profanities at the driver. I'm not sure if he was able to see me, but the van sped off suddenly. Okay, obviously it wasn't Uishi. <laughs> I don't know if they were trying to hit Keiji, because weren't they honking at him? Which means it's trying to warn him about the coming. So I don't know what happened there. I kind of help but continue yelling out profanities. The disgrace from being covered in mud hurt me more than any physical wounds. I slot through the muddy paddy and made my way back onto the road town. <laughs> Shit. I'll track you down and sue you. If I go looking for a van, I'm sure to find it in this little village. The path I was on had rice paddies on either side, and it had become so narrow that one car should barely fit through. It wasn't a place you could tear full speed down in a car, let alone pass by pedestrians. Not only was it a narrow road, but the car just now was closer to my side of the road than the other when it went past me. Even as I cursed, I was desperately trying to suppress the dark cloud roiling up within me. That it was purposeful. I don't know, it haunts, right? Like, why would it haunt if it was just trying to kill you? Yeah, it was honking its horn. Maybe it was trying to run away from something and it was just kind of swerving. I don't think I was trying to kill him. Or why would it haunt its horn? Yeah. This is... It's something else. I think. This wasn't a hit and run. That card just now was trying to run me over, wasn't it? Thinking back, I did feel like there had been a car creeping up on me slowly for a while. That's right, as soon as I parted ways with that person taking a walk, I had a feeling I had that feeling the whole time. If it had wanted to pass me, then it had no shortage of chances. Normally, I would have felt suspicious and turned around sooner, but I was lost in thought and now, and now was kicking myself for not realizing it was there sooner. And then when the path became narrow and there's no one else in sight, he floored it. If I had hesitated for even a moment, the result would have been no laughing matter. As the adrenaline rush from nearly being run over subsided, and the realization of just how terrifying the preceding events were sunk in. There's no doubt about it. The van was intentionally trying to hit me. A cold, viscous sweat seeped from my scalp and sat down my back before dribbling off. I struggled to avoid falling into a panic. There was still a possibility that this was really just an accident. Calm down, Keiichi. But also don't be so naive, Keiichi. Being that last one that you killed next time, you need to always be on your toes. Don't give them any openings. If my enemy was really out to kill me, 
the next time they would use a more reliable method. If that time came and I was acting like I was now, getting covered in mud was the price I had paid for my own naivety. Covered in mud but without injury, not even a sprain. I guess this is what you would call the silver lining. I began walking again, this time cautiously. I wouldn't even show a hint of carelessness. I had suspected only Rena and the others up until now. No, it was because I had suspected them that I had believed there were no other enemies. Uishi san had said so, didn't he? There is a possibility of a village conspiracy. Was I really mired so deeply in this situation that I had no choice but to try and carry on as usual? Wouldn't it be safest just to hold myself up in my house? But the moment I abandoned my regular routine, everyone around me would abandon theirs as well. That was just too horrifying of a thought. I recalled the tales Uishi san told me of an Hinamizawa. Whoops. Was still called Oni Dafuchi. A frightening tale of an entire village of demons hunting their prey, surrounding them and eating them alive. One must not interfere with the demons. One must pretend not to see it. The enemy were numerous, the whole village. The villagers with their unfavoring faith in the curse would do nothing to help me. The strong, sudden flash of sunshine made me slightly dizzy. I had no idea what was going on anymore. When I suspected it was the work of a man, I would catch a glimpse of Oyashiro Sama's curse. And when I suspected it was Oyashiro Sama's curse, someone would poke their head out. What was co coincidence? What was intentional? Who was my enemy? Who was just a bystander? No, what I really, truly wanted to know was, how did I end up with the proverbial bullseye painted on my back? Eventually, an answer in a form I could understand will appear. I don't care when that will happen, because until then, I cannot die. That alone fueled my resolve to fight and the will to keep me alive. I remembered seeing the metal bat in the gym storage shed, but there was a padlock on the door buried my entry. At the very least, I wanted to get my hands on it before everyone else arrived at school. I circled the school grounds impatiently, but all I could find were things like pieces of lumber, nothing that I could bring into classroom easily. Then I had an epiphany. I searched I should search inside the classroom. If it was something in the classroom to begin with, then there wouldn't be a problem. I could tell everyone's indoor shoes were still in their lockers. Good thing I came early. Nobody else was here yet. I wondered, what can I find in the classroom? Maybe you should even look for some clues in the classroom, like go through uh, the girls' lockers if possible. I didn't think I could find an especially efficient, effective weapon like a bat, but it couldn't be helped at this point. Until the gym storage shed was open, I needed to find a substitute. What can you find in a classroom? A metal ruler, maybe? I don't know how much that would hurt. I mean, it can be kind of sharp. Maybe it'd do something. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> A lingering hint of naivety whispered that there was no way I'd be attacked at school. But such soft ideas would no longer protect me. To think that they were slowly making their way into parts of my life that I had once thought impenetrable. In the worst case, my own house might not be safe anymore. That was an incredibly frightening thought. But I believe that not considering the worst case scenario would have been even more frightening. Anyways, I will survive. So long as I lived, then I will definitely be able to escape this labyrinth of nonsense. Definitely. My exploration of the classroom came to an impasse. Impasse. That much was to be expected. 
there's no way that there's no way there would be anything that could be a weapon in the classroom. In case of emergency, there's probably nothing I could do but swing my own chair around. My gaze landed on the lockers that had come to be used for personal storage. The locker that Mion used to store her pile of games was among them. There is one for each person in the class, all lined up. Of course, there is one for me as well. Oh yeah, there was supposed to still be a trash suit in my locker. Yeah, it kept changed. <laughs> Seeing me covered in mud would be strange. I should go change later. But first, I needed a weapon. In one of my class, if one of my classrooms came, it would be hard to rummage through all the lockers. I swiftly began opening the lockers one by one. They were mostly just filled with things like gym clothes, personal items, and umbrellas. I mean, they does seem to kind of use an umbrella, but it wouldn't do much. An umbrella. If I can't find anything better, then this would have, to, this would have to be my weapon. Yeah, it's it's alright. I mean. Oh, I actually don't think that <laughs> I don't think I would do a lot. Maybe you can like open the umbrella in their face and like push them away and run. That could be something. Okay. Take a quick water break then. Should have made some tea, but I forgot. That was probably loud, <laughs> sorry. I was about to give up on finding anything decent when I opened a locker that held exactly what I wanted. It was, without a doubt, a metal bat. It was well worn and pretty beat up, but there was no doubt it was usable. Well, that's convenient. In that locker, in that locker that reeked of mold, there's also a hun there also hung a baseball uniform. It was probably the locker of a student in PV lead or something like that. If that was the case, then he'd probably ask for it back. At that time, I could hear voices of children stuffling their way noisily in from the hallway. Amongst them, I could make out Rita Chen and Sadako. We're so muddy, right? <laughs> Oh, this music. Oh, Sadako. I don't know why Teichi still thinks these people are suspicious. They've literally done nothing suspicious so far. Mian and Rena is totally fair. But these people did nothing. I nonchalantly hit the bat I was holding behind my back. <laughs> I guess he's just paranoid of everyone, but again, little kids, <laughs> really little kids that are really physically inferior to you. With that said, I began taking off my clothes, and her girl began to blush, just as I expected her to. <laughs> Love how she's still peeking through one eye. So adorable. New Sadako expressions. Oh, Rita's just normal about it. Sadako feigned disgust. She went into the hall, still blushing. Conversely, Rika Chan continued to stare at me, preparing to change. <laughs> Rika Chan is ready, so I'm going to look at the face of Rika Chan. I'm not ready, so I'm fine. Uh, she deliberately pouted and looked at me with upturned eyes. Then Rika Chan is ready now. I'm not ready, so I'm fine. That's adorable, too. Rita Chen appeared to be satisfied with being considered a lady, made her way to join Sadako in the hallway. Just as I breathed a sigh of relief, Rita Chen stopped suddenly and turned back towards me. Oh, she noticed the bat. Dude, what is this song? This is the first time this soundtrack played. It's so happy with being super simple. 
uh, after I finish this novel, I definitely have to re-listen to the soundtrack. It's pretty great. Ah, just a bit. My body is numb. Just a little bit, I'm going to start. I'm going to start with a little bit. I'm going to start with a little bit. I'm going to start with a little bit. Honestly, my I don't know if you knew my rankings for the characters. I think I kind of said it a lot a while ago that it was like Sadako, Rena, Rika, then Mion. I think right, Rika's been slowly like pushing over Rena. Maybe it's just because of all the crazy stuff that's been happening though. I can't confirm that. She was talking like an old lady, despite her appearance. After saying that, Rita Chen started to leave again, but stopped and looked back at me once more. That was odd. Oh, it seems she already knew I took it out of someone's locker. There's no name on the locker door. Oh, what if it was Satoshi's bat? Oh, that'd be... Maybe that's why it's moldy. I didn't know whose bat it was, but I would be borrowing it until they complained. It wouldn't be for long, just until the gym storage shed was open. After quickly changing into the trap suit, I checked the time. I still had plenty of time before class began, because I came so early. Dun, 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 oh. wow. Back to the Higurashi. I took the bat in one hand and went out of the story I, that was, of course, to practice my swing. I needed to make it known that I would always have a bat on me so I could practice my swing. That's smart. At some point, the sunlight had become even stronger. Disregarding my classmates, as they made their way to school, I took my position in the shadow of the school building. I wasn't the academic type, and I wasn't much of an athlete either. Same. The odd middle. <laughs> I might get muscle pain if I just suddenly started swinging. I should at least start out with some warm-ups. Yep, stretches. I doubt anyone would think I was doing something out of the ordinary. Which was the exact opposite of my actual mental state. I gripped the bat and swung lightly. The bat was by no means light. The weight would make it re a reliable weapon when I needed it to be. Sorry, I just had to blow my nose a bit. Or, I am a nice sneeze. I didn't blow my nose. Maybe I should blow my nose. <laughs> Hold on, let me mute it. There we go. Do I sound better? Maybe. I can never tell. Of course, I could only pray that the moment I needed to use this as a weapon would never come. Hopefully. Just carrying it around could deter attacks against me. At least that's what I hoped. Oh, uh, that sound. <laughs> Look at their faces. With being bombarded by such a historical voice, I jumped. It was Ren and Mion. Oops. We're the Koshin! Higurashi <laughs> baseball spin-off. あ、知らなかったろ。実は三段腹なんだ。もちもちでタプタプなんだぞ。もちもちでタプタプ。あ、すまんてせい、ちょっと待ってください、ちょっと待ってください。じゃあまあ、頑張って県大会を目指してちょうだいよ。おじさん応援してるわ。野球部の強い高校教えようか。そこにいる沢野亀田くんがすごいピッチャーなんだけどさ。頑張ってね。
Seems like they already did me for a baseball nap. But oh well. I like baseball. It's actually one of my few sports I kind of would watch. I mean, I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it, but I enjoy it. Well, if I did really make it to the championship, it would be a clinch cinch. After all, I'd be the pitcher and the catcher. I'd pitch the ball, then run past the ball I just threw, and change over to being the catcher in a burst of super incredible explosive speed. I feel like Rena Cute Mode might be able to do that. <laughs> I laughed dryly at the ludicrous image. Coming back to my senses, I smashed a bat and sprang. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a light I would see. I pounded the ground over and over. With each impact, the rever reverberation, rever reverberation, you know, the vibrations, basically. Traveling through the bat, stun my hands. If they smile at me, I like me. Wait, if they smile at me like that, I'll... I'll... Mm. I don't allow anyone to come close to me. Don't trust anyone. No matter how many times I tell myself that, if they made me smile like that, I'll... Mm. I already knew quite well that they were demons dwelling in my smiling friends, but I just couldn't believe it. Did that kind of split personality really exist? Like how Reddit confessed at the doctor, were they simply being possessed by Oyashiro-sama? In other words, did a supernatural being like Oyashiro-sama really exist and was it possessing everyone to try and kill me? Yeah, that would be wonderful. If only everyone was actually my friends all along and everything was all just Oyashiro Sama's fault. My case the I yelled out, drawing out all the power from the pit of my stomach, and raised the bat violently into the air. As I screamed out with all my might, I beat the metal bat into the ground over and over. With every impact, my weakness was being beaten down. Smash. Forget. Smash. Don't be so soft. Smash. Know your enemy. Smash. Like hell, I let them kill me. My shoulders heaving up and down from my rigid breathing, I heard the first bell ring just as I calmed down. I gasped with a sudden realization. That was the final bell. As I felt all the tension drain from me, I let out a deep breath. My mind was in a muddled state for much of the entire day. I didn't feel like I was awake, but it didn't feel like I was asleep either. I couldn't say it felt especially comfortable, but I felt kind of relief that the sanctity of the school, part of my daily life, had Yet to be violated, I'm being called. Don't know the number though. Have, how long have I been, uh, let me just check something. Distractions, I know. But this actually might be important. I just have a bad habit of not putting people into my contacts since it actually looks like a legit number. Mm, one second. Okay, it's not someone I know directly. Alright. I could only grip my teeth and bear with it at this living house, slowly nod away at me. The sound of Renna's voice brought me back to my senses. Everyone was moving the desk together as usual. That's right, it was a it was happy fun club time. But I had no intention of taking part. I half heartedly stuffed the contents of my desk into my bed as I prepared to go home. It was a weak handed gesture to avoid having to actually say I'll be going home now. Why 
The tone of the words that spilled from her mouth matched Mion's disapproving glare. It felt like the air in the room had dried out. Sadako looked like she was about to say something, but perhaps dissuaded by the mood, she swallowed her words and stayed silent. Nobody said a thing. I took that to mean that I could leave if I wanted. But the collective gaze of the four of them, like the tiny pins used to mount an insect in a display, held me in place. Rena was the one who cut through the heavy mood. <laughs> she said it in such a melodic. Melod. 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 You know. Sad tone. <laughs> sad tone that it sent a wave of pain racing through my heart. If this pain was going to kill me, I wanted it to be the soft part of me that could still feel pain. I tore at my chest, violently tearing out the pins I held. That held me in place. I'd only be hurting myself by saying anything more, so I swallowed my words. Cutting things off there, I turned away and exited the classroom. They didn't speak a word to me as I left. Uh, it's sad. But it's probably smart. Actually, I don't know if that's smart. <laughs> but it's alright. It was a long, dull trip back home, but I didn't lose focus. I firmly squeezed the grip of my bat, which was already soggy from sweat. Realizing that, I wiped it down with my sleeve. If something were to happen, I wouldn't want it to be slippery. Since this morning, I'd become especially sensitive to the presence of cars. Even while walking, my ears pricked up and sought out threatening sounds and presences that could be closing in. And that was why I could hear it. Without a doubt, there were footsteps. Those footsteps had matched perfectly with mine for a while now. From what I could sense, it was just one person, but I had no intention of being careless. Did they intend to follow me like that car this morning until we were in a good location to assault me? Then it wasn't a good idea to keep walking like this. I stopped walking and looked back. The wooded path crowded with trees responded with silence as if there was nobody there to begin with. But I wouldn't be fooled. I was certain footsteps were following me. And just as I stopped, the footsteps stopped as well. Meaning, the person following me wanted to keep their distance. That was, without a question, proof I was their target. I held my breath, waiting for that presence to panic and start moving again. The trees rustled with the sound of the wind. The Higurashi also joined in the dissonant chorus, trying to throw my focus into this array. Had five minutes passed, or had I been like this for a whole thirty minutes? It was so hard to breathe that I might have suffocated. It seemed I would be the first one to panic. Without a doubt, he was lurking in the shade of that tree with the baited, with bated breath. Then, I made the first move. I fixed my grip on the bat. Oh, please don't. I raced it up to my shoulder to be ready to swing that at any time. With all my might, I screamed at whoever was hiding in the shade of the trees. But the presence in the shade didn't budge. Until the moment I found them, they had no intentions of revealing themselves. I screamed out angrily at them again, but even still, they didn't move at all. Then I'll go over there myself. Uh, with all due diligence, I approached step by step. Stepping into the tree's shadow, I saw a human figure there. That figure was curled up like a small animal. Lena. Oh. When she realized that I had found her, her expression softened. She seemed apologetic, but wasn't going to speak a word. Yeah, I thought it was just one of the girls following, just to see what's wrong with her. <laughs> I wouldn't accept that silence and scream that question at her. <laughs> Rena 
Brenna was in panic, tears welled, welling up in her eyes. But it was so obvious that she had been following me. <laughs> Thinking about how I'd been acting up until now, it wasn't hard to imagine that my behavior could have been perceived as strange. Yeah, for sure. So Rena was concerned. At a quick glance, that's how it would seem. But I wasn't going to let my down my guard down that easily. Even if it was really the case, she still wouldn't have to do something like try to tail me. She should have called out to me when I was leaving and gone outright with me. But Rena didn't do that. She kept her distance from me and matched my walking speed. On top of that, she matched the sound of her footsteps and deviously tried to hide her presence from me. Then after she realized I noticed she was there, she held her breath as she was tried hiding from me. She wore a timid expression that would force one to take pity on her, but without a doubt, she was tailing me. <laughs> Still glaring at Rena, I continued walking onwards. After I walked for a bit, she ignored my command and began walking again, so I yelled at her once more. That's kind of funny. I moved out of the way and waved my back violently to urge her forward. Oh, this is making me sad. Making a pitiful expression, she seemed she meekly squeaked out the words in a voice that she knew would cut into my heart. That agitated me to no end. I knew it was a lie. If you wanted to go home together, then you should have called out to me. Now you're just Blurting out random lies. It seemed that my the seething anger within me was written all over my face. Even without me saying anything, Rena had understood what I was feeling inside. I swung the bat, urging her to walk. Rena looked back and forth between me and the bat and started walking hesitantly, then stopped the Brenda guided herself while pointing at me holding the bat. She may have realized I wasn't planning on using this bat for baseball. I lowered the bat but still guardedly opened the way for her. <laughs> There's nothing else she could protest. She passed by me timidly, as so as to not set me off. She stopped after I watched her pass by. She stopped completely after having barely moved at all. Then a powerful dust blew past us, berating my face with dust. Uh oh! The dust got into my eyes and clouded my vision. While rubbing my eyes with my left hand, I swung blindly with the bat in my right, protecting the small opening I had presented. But Rena didn't even try to attack during the opening. Attack me? No, she hadn't even... She hadn't budged, budged an inch. I could tell from the sound of her fluttering string in the wind. As her skirt settled, so did the silence. At that moment, the voice inside of me immediately warned me of impending danger. I was caught by surprise. The smell of the air had changed. Without me realizing it, the air around me suddenly felt like a calamity was about to befall me. It was like the air had suddenly become invisible like concrete, like Rena and I were locked in this space. Rena didn't move an inch. Also unable to move, I stared at her back. Rena was the first to break the silence. 
Instantly, she altered her stance. I felt like I had just witnessed her shift from Rena into that other person who looked like Rena. But the voice was one I knew well, which filled me with a kind of bewildering pity. <coughs> Excuse me. Carelessly, carelessly, I felt relief upon hearing that pitiful voice. She tried to even turn around. Rena squeezed her voice out desperately as she trembled. The question Rena asked was by no means unexpected. でも、昨日まで持ってなかったし。どうして突然。ちょっと。俺がバットを持ってるとおかしいかよ。あ、べ。だって、ケイチ君、野球とかしない人だったでしょ。おかしいよ。I couldn't tell what kind of answer she was looking for. And I was getting tired of answering her. 突然、野球がしたくなったんだよ。それじゃおかしいか? おかしいよ。the voice sounds different, kind of. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I mean, she said it's weird, but... Her voice does not sound like her. Sounds kind of like a younger, right now. I tried to sit a bit, sound a bit more threatening to end the conversation. Until my suspicions about Rena were cleared, I had no obligation to answer her questions. Do you hear that? <laughs> that was a YouTube notification. <laughs> Rena still didn't turn around and spat out words of apology one after the next. This is actually super creepy. Cause this doesn't sound like Rena at all. Except for the mannerisms. I yelled loudly at her, causing her to flinch that she had been struck. Seeing her in such a pathetic state caused my heart to ache sorely. But even though she was afraid, she stubbornly kept herself from moving. Before I was able to threaten her again, Rana asked her final question. What is it? I'm nervous. What did she mean by the bat was the same? I had no idea what she was talking about. Oh Even so, Rana didn't turn around. After inhaling deeply, she screamed. Yeah, I called it. Satoshi. Upon hearing that name out of the blue, I became dumbfounded for a brief moment. By Satoshi. Did she mean the student who transferred out last year? No, that couldn't be. Rena had tried to cover it up by saying he transferred. But Uishi san told me quite clearly that he was missing. He was the student who sat at, at my seat up until last year. He was believed to have been demoned away by Oyasho Sama's curse. I didn't know the details about his disappearance. The aunt he lived with was killed the night of the Watanadashi by a drug addict, and not long after that, he suddenly vanished and was now missing. That Satoshi and I were what? My gaze fell to the bat in my hands. Could it be? Satoshi Hojo. Was it really written on the bat? Uh, it was a bit difficult to see, but that was what was written on the white tape at the end of the bat. I see. So this was Satoshi's bat. Oh, oh, 
サトシのバットだったんだな誰も使ってなかったんでちょっと借りたんだよいいだろそれくらいそそんなことじゃないの The way Renna said that made it seem like this bat was something that should never be touched. Like it was some sort of offering at a shrine or a memento of the deceased. I could only stand there, perplexed and unable to respond. Renna continued speaking without waiting for a reply. That's so eerie. Rena was talking about more than just the bat belonging to Satoshi. So Rena was here, and Satoshi was here. I was a little confused by that since she said she transferred last year and Satoshi transferred out. Last year, too, but I just think it overlapped. What about it? I closed my mouth before I could say that out loud. Listen carefully, Keiichi. Rena's trying to tell us something important. Yeah. <laughs> This is actually terrifying. I have goosebumps right now. Say you're really doing that though. And one day he suddenly what? Rena had swallowed her words. Rena's sudden silence brought a hush back to the down brought a hush back to the surrounding area. It was then I could finally digest the content of the entire conversation. She was saying my actions was exactly the same as Satoshi's. What was the meaning of this? Up until just now, I'd forgotten all about Satoshi. I never paid much thought to him in the first place. Not only that, I didn't even know anything of what he'd done. My actions told me. My actions today should have been my own creation after all the planning I had done. But. They had been the exact same as Satoshi's? And Satoshi, no more importantly, if both Satoshi and I acted the same way, then there's a really good possibility that what happened after would be the same. Rena, Rena knew. She knew what became of Satoshi. No, forget about what happened to a die in the past. Rena knew what was going to happen. To me. With that, I grabbed Rena's shoulder violently and forcefully turned her around to face me. Oh, something scary done happen. After I faced her, after as I faced her, I felt a jolt travel through my entire body. Oh, it was dead eyed. It was the person that I didn't know. At least it definitely wasn't the Rena Ryuju I'd been talking up, been talking to up until now. The voice now didn't have a trace of trembling or emotion that it had before. The amount of regret I felt for turning her around so carelessly was unsurpassed. That gaze that pierced like a cold needle, the smile on her face that invoked an image of having been carved out by a knife. Chills went down my spine. My mind froze under a layer of rhyme. Both of Rena's eyes pierced through mine, leaving me unable to look away. As if to remind me of the fear from that time before, Rena brought her face close to mine, so close that I could feel her breath. Her face had filled my entire field of vision. Then her sharply shaped lips grew even sharper, like the curve of a crescent moon. She grinned. <laughs> After a short pause, Rena repeated the same words again. Transferred? Meaning what? What Rena meant must have been some new definition of transfer that I was previously not aware of. My throat and lips dried up. I couldn't even acknowledge what I had just heard. 
All I could do was swallow down my own saliva. It would seem that Renna saw that as a nod. She pulled her days back and spirally stepped back two, three paces. As she did, my legs gave out and I fell to my knees pathetically. Again, it's like that same scene from before. Renna and me on my knees underneath her emotionless smile. That had to be a very odd sight indeed. Seeing me in the pathetic state, she neither scoffed at me nor held out her hand. But I could neither stand nor escape her gaze shooting through my eyes. There was undoubtedly a metal bat in my hand, but right now it was useless to me. I was like a fly caught in her web. Heavy sweat beaded all over my body. I could feel it dripping from my skin. Rena finally released me from that cage of time after what felt like an eternity. But her question was missing something important and was incre incredibly vague. Once again, I swallowed hard, urging her on. What did she not want me to do? <laughs> Chapter. Oh, it's been an hour almost. That was eerie. Oh my god. Okay, that was interesting. Do I have to listen back to this? <laughs> Pinch hitter. Yeah, maybe I was just hearing it wrong, but that didn't really sound like Rena. Or if it was Rena, it was a lot higher pitched voice than maybe a younger Rena. But damn, okay. So. I did call him Satoshi's back. They kind of like foreshadowed it a bit. Like, then why else would a locker be moldy? But that's interesting. So it looks like Keiichi and Satoshi are almost doing the same exact thing, which almost seems again like some sort of manipulation, like some someone's manipulating Keiichi to do to follow the same path as Satoshi. And it's weird, because even in her weird mind-controlled mode, she's, like, warning him not to do it. So maybe it's not even the village who's doing it. Is it we, she said? I don't know. I don't think so. I have to think about it more again. I'm sick. I'm not... I haven't been thinking too much, but I'll, I'll definitely try to think about that and talk about it at the beginning of the first episode. But I hope you enjoyed this hour special. <laughs> Unintentional hour special. And I'll see you next time, alright? And have a nice day, as always. Goodbye.